Looks like the sleeping giant is finally awake. Anthropic just released the Claude 4 series. Allow me to introduce Claude 4 Opus and Claude 4 Sonnet. It's the next gen models setting new standards in coding, reasoning, and agentic workflows. Starting off with Claude 4 Opus, the world's best coding model that is topping Sway Bench at a score of 72.5% and Terminal Bench at a score of 43.2%. It's built for long running tasks, showcasing sustained focus for hours and powers tools like cursor, replit, and block with deep multi-file code understanding, editing, and debugging. It even maintains memory across tasks like storing key information in local files for long-term coherence, like creating a new navigation guide while playing Pokemon. For example, the Claude 4 Opus right now is playing Pokemon Red. It autonomously built a navigation guide by logging game critical notes. And with the new thinking summaries, Claude keeps its thoughts readable, only condensing when necessary. Then we have Claude 4 Sonnet. So they didn't just release one model, they released two. And this is a major upgrade from the Sonnet 3.7, which is scoring a 72.7 percentage on the Sway Bench test. It strikes the perfect balance of performance and speed. Now with the release of both of these two new models, there were a lot of new features introduced. You first have the hybrid mode thinking, where you can switch between instant replies and extended thinking for deep reasoning. This is where you can get a more thought put answer generated by enabling this hybrid mode. You also have dual use, which is going to be an alternate between reasoning plus external tools like web search. You have parallel tool execution and improved memory from file storages. You have Claude Code, which is a tool that they've just released uh, earlier in the year, which is now GA with native VS Code and JetBrains extensions. And it's a background task that you can have running with GitHub Actions. And you can even use this as an SDK for custom agents. There's also a new API capability with Code Execution Tool and MCP Connector files API and prompt caching which is up to one hour. Now on the Sway Bench verified test you can see that the results clearly showcase Anthropic's dominance in software engineering task. This is the model you would want to use for coding task. Initially it was the Gemini 2.5 Pro but I would lean towards the Sonnet now due to its performance in multiple different coding categories. You can see that on this Sway Bench uh, verified test the Claude Opus 4 and the Sonnet 4 lead the pack with an accuracy of 72.5% and a 72.7% respectively, outperforming all of the other models including OpenAI's Codex 1, the O3, the GPT 4.1, and even when enabling parallel test time compute, the Opus 4 reaches an impressive 79.4% while the Sonnet 4 tops the chart at an 80.2%. This positions the Cloud4 models as the most capable for complex software engineering workflows, which is why I would probably want to use this in Cursor, Klein, and many of the different types of AI coding agents that are available. Here are the benchmark scores for the Cloud4 Opus and the Cloud4 Sonnet. In comparison to the Sonnet 3.7, the O3, the GPT 4.1, and the Gemini 2.5 Pro, which is the best model available at the moment. But in this case, in categories like agentic uh, coding, agentic uh, terminal coding, as well as agentic tool use, and a couple of other benchmarks, you can see that these two models do a better job in terms of its performance in coding as well as math, and it is able to outpace many of these other models in most of these categories, which is insane. Now, in regards to pricing, the Claude Opus 4 is insanely expensive, where it's charging you an input price of $15 per 1 million uh, tokens and an output price of $75 per 1 million tokens. Now, the Claude Sonnet 4 is using the same pricing for the Claude 3.7 Sonnet, where it's charging an input price of $3 per 1 million input tokens and $15 per 1 million output tokens. Just take a look at the Claude 4 Opus in action. It one-shotted a full browser agent with API as well as front-end access in a single prompt. That level of coherence and execution is thanks to three core upgrades that we saw from this new model. You first have the reliable long-term reasoning. 
This is where Opus 4 avoids the typical shortcut taking scene in Agents, improving task fidelity by 65% over the Sonnet 3.7. Now, secondly, you have advanced memory through local files, where it can create and update memory files, letting it retain critical information across long, multi-step workflows. And lastly, you have thinking summaries plus a dev mode, which is where summaries condensed long thought chains for re readability, while the developer mode is something that's going to give you more raw chain of thought for precise debugging and advanced prompt engineering. These are the core principles that have been now infused into the cloud for Opus, and this is why it is capable of reasoning and using context for hours to execute your task. So before we move on to our testing, let's take a look and condense all the information we talked about. The Cloud4 Opus is their flagship model in the Cloud4 series. It excels at complex reasoning, coding, and agentic workflows. It supports an extended memory through local file access and can maintain context and continuity over long tasks. It's great for building autonomous agents, multi-step tasks, as well as tools that require long-term coherence. It's ideal for developers, researchers, and power users who need high performance and full control through their new developer mode. It is best for end-to-end -end app generation, long context workflows, as well as prompt engineering. Then you have Cloud4 Sonnet, a smaller, faster sibling to the Opus model, and it also features a hybrid thinking mode with instant replies or deeper reasoning when needed. It shares key improvements like reduced shortcut behaviors, as well as tool use and reasoning tool switching, and it offers solid performance at a low latency and cost. Now, if you're interested in getting started with these two models, you can easily use it through their chatbot, Cloud AI, where you can access both of them. You can also test out the two models within their console. You can access their API as well, and you can even get it through OpenRouter. So you have multiple ways to access this model. Now, what we're gonna be doing is testing this model on a couple of prompts to assess how well it is in different coding tasks. Now, what you can do is you can actually use this through Klein as well. And I'm using the Anthropic API provider. I paste in the API key and we're gonna test out both of these models simultaneously. I'm definitely hitting a rate limit, but let's see. We're gonna first generate with the Opus and then send in the exact same prompt to the Sonnet. We're essentially asking both of these two models to build a responsive web page using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that lets users track monthly income and expenses with features like adding, editing, deleting transactions, and etc. And I'm also asking it to add as many features as possible. Now I will say the only downside is probably the 200k context length, which is kind of restrictive in having it generate larger context and work with more tokens. So there we go. This is the personal finance tracking app that was generated by the Opus model and it looks absolutely amazing. It was able to focus on all the different uh, things that I had requested, even the night mode where you can export different things and you can actually add in transactions and visualize it on the bottom. And now this is the generation I've gotten from the Sonnet model and it does look pretty good. It kind of replicated the same style, but there are certain components that are missing, but you can see it looks pretty good, but I guess the top title doesn't look as good as what the Opus was capable of generating, but still it did a decent job. So I guess both of these two get a pass. The next prompt we're testing Sonnet on is coding out a TV channel simulator from channels zero to nine and we're trying to see how well the model is in terms of generating code creatively and visually generating different animations in p5.js and there we go this is the tv simulation generated by the cloud sonnet model so let's go through all the different uh channels you can see there's a sports zone a weather zone uh cosmic tv and overall, it actually did a pretty decent job in terms of generating creative uh, different sorts of channels. I'm definitely surprised to see that it did that. And there we go. This is what the Opus model was capable of generating. You can see there's a st uh, static animation when you're switching through all these different channels. And you can see the quality that you get in comparison to the Sonnet. This is why they say this is the ideal model you would want to use for code generation. The only concern is the pricing for it. Next up, we're gonna have both the models create an SVG representation of a butterfly. Butterfly. Next up, we're gonna have it create an SVG representation of a butterfly with symmetrical wings and simple styling. This is the generation I have gotten from the Sonnet model. Now it looks beautiful, but the thing is, it doesn't actually 
look like a butterfly. It just looks like a worm. And I guess you can see it kind of looks like a butterfly with these wings, but to me it doesn't. If it was connected, it would look a lot better. But overall, I guess it get, got the best styling done in comparison to many of the other models. But let's take a look at what the Opus was capable of doing. And this is what the Opus model was actually able to output. It looks beautiful, and I definitely love what it was capable of doing for this. So here is what the Claude Sonnet was actually capable of doing. It created a Tetris game. You can see the score as well as the different controls that have been added to it. And guys, this is what the Opus model was capable of generating. Now, this is a new type of generation that I haven't really seen. And you can see there's actual animations to the game. And there's actually a scorecard and a functional animated uh, Tetris blocks that are being dropped. So I definitely love what both of these models are capable of generating. But this one is just insane. And that is where I'm going to give both of these a pass. But overall, both of these models are super impressive in terms of its coding capabilities. And I am definitely happy to see that Anthropic is finally back with a new model. So that's basically it for both of these two models. I hope you enjoyed today's video and got some sort of value. Make sure you subscribe to the second channel. Join our newsletter. Make sure you follow me and join our Discord. On And make sure you follow me on Twitter as well as subscribing to the YouTube channel, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please take a look at our previous videos because there's a lot of content that you'll truly benefit from. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys really shortly. Peace out, fellas.